Hey everyone, this is Allie and welcome to The Commoner. Today on my channel is going to be part two of my Universal haul. If you haven't seen part one, click this link and you can see all of the wands that I purchased. This video though is going to be for everything else that I purchased at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So I figured I would start off this video showing some of the clothing that I purchased at the Wizarding World, considering I am wearing a piece of it right now. So I bought this shirt at the Weasleys, Wizarding Weezes, of course. And they had a couple different shirts there. I actually bought a different one and took it back and exchanged it for this one. The other one had kind of a very hard printed picture on it and it was just a little uncomfortable for me. Uh, so I went back and got this one, which I do like. For the rest of my clothing items, basically everything is shirts, t-shirts and sweatshirts. So let's see what else we have in here. So we purchased a, just a simple Borgen and Burks shirt from Borgen and Burks. Um, I love Nocturne Alley. I'm a Slytherin. I had to have a Borgen and Burks shirt. Now this one, you can't see all of the cool little details, but it is a Marauder's Map shirt. One of the cool little details that you can't see right now is it is actually heat activated. So whenever we were out in the sun, there are little footprints that appear in the red. So that's a really cool shirt. This one was one of the ones that I knew I was picking up before we even got there. This is another t-shirt that I purchased. So this one, you can see it has a really cool design. It is the Deathly Hallows, but it has the, the different actual Hallows are listed on there, like the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, the Cloak of Invisibility. This one's a really thin material too, and it was really hot while we were down there, so nice to have thin. So this one, this one I kind of wish you guys could feel the actual text on here. It's kind of velvety, um, but this one's kind of like an acid wash, you can hardly tell on it, but it has all the different spells. I thought this one was really cool. So this was another shirt that I knew I was going to get before we even got there. Um, I had seen it in a video and I was like, I have to have that, especially with cold weather coming up. So this is a hoodie. Um, it's a thinner hoodie, but it is red and I purchased this at Borgen and Burks and it has the word dark mark listed on the chest. And then a cool thing that I didn't know about it until we got there is that on the back of it, there is actually the dark mark. So I really liked this one because it's a different color. It's bright red and I'm not a Gryffindor, so I don't have a lot of red stuff that I can wear, but I do enjoy red. So I liked having the dark mark shirt. Now this sweater, I, I guess this is kind of a new line of merchandise that they've put out. They have a lot of different things with this um, art on it, but I'm very excited to wear this during the winter because it is a sweatshirt and it is a little warmer than that last one. So it's Hogwarts alumni. I think we're all Hogwarts alumni in our hearts. But a little cool thing they have that kind of sneaks up on you is on the arm. They've got all of your houses from Hogwarts. I just really like that. I almost got a lanyard with the Hogwarts alumni, but I didn't. I'm gonna get it next time. But yes, I am very excited for this shirt. It is gonna be warm and cozy. So before I get into the rest of the actual shirts that I got, I wanted to show you what I had to of course get because it's 2020. So we have all of the house masks. Now, it was not my plan to buy all four of these. I am a Slytherin and my husband is a Hufflepuff. So we went just to get Slytherin and Hufflepuff. But when we first got there, Slytherin and Hufflepuff were nowhere to be found. So there were plenty of Ravenclaw and Gryffindor. So we got those. We got those at the front of the store at the Universal or at the front of the park at the Universal Studios store. And then we went to a few different shops. We asked a few people, they looked in their system, no Slytherin or Hufflepuff. And then we walk into Ollivander's and don't you know it, 
they have a ton of Slytherin and Hufflepuff. So now we have all four, which is fun. So yeah, the masks that we need. Now the next items of clothing, they aren't really everyday wear clothing and they're really cool. So the first one, now I already have my Slytherin robes. I got those when I went to Universal in Hollywood, but you can't have a Slytherin cosplay without the actual Slytherin cardigan from the actual films. So that's what I got. And you can't complete your cosplay without your house scarf and your house tie. So we made sure to pick up all three of those. And then the last item of clothing, which is probably the one I'm most excited about. Are you really a Harry Potter fan? If you don't have a Weasley sweater. I got Harry's because there's no A's in Universal Studios. They need to come out with one in every letter because I would definitely buy an A. This one is also made by the original or by those who made them for the films. Now I have very kind of sensitive skin. They're a little scratchy, but I'm just going to wear a long sleeve shirt underneath this because I had to have it. So I do have just a couple pieces of jewelry that I purchased that I want to show you. So the first piece, oh, that's not jewelry. Well, this isn't jewelry, um, but we did purchase a Gringotts keychain. Now I'm not going to use this as a keychain. I am actually going to take the key off of here and display it just as a Gringotts key because I have to have a key to my vault at Gringotts. Now another piece that I have, I am a Slytherin and I wanted a good piece of jewelry to show that I'm a Slytherin. So what better piece of jewelry than the Slytherin Hourglass? This thing is beautiful. If you look at it, you see it actually works. And it works. I didn't wear it today because it just didn't really match the Weasley shirt. But I will be wearing it probably from now on. And then the last piece of jewelry, which you might have noticed because I'm actually wearing it, is this beautiful bracelet that I purchased at Morgan & Burks. Now this bracelet is a it's just a silver bracelet, but it has different Death Eater masks on it. And I thought that was pretty cool because they're not all the same mask. Jewelry wasn't my main thing that I was going to buy. I did want a couple pieces, but I had not seen this bracelet before. And when I saw it, I was like, mm, I have to have it. And I didn't get it at first. I was like, no, I don't need it. And the last day we were there, I was finally like, okay, I really want this. I've wanted it every day. Every day we've came in here, I've wanted it. So we got it. It's probably my favorite piece of jewelry that I have. So the next section of items that I bought, I did buy them to display, but also for eating. Um, so some of them are empty or have been eaten, but I just kind of wanted to show you. I did buy some saltwater taffy, but in this awesome little Honey Dukes bin. So I thought that would be a really good display piece on my Honey Duke shelf. From Honey Dukes, we also have a little display tin with lemon sherbets in there. This one, again, display, Andy. We also picked up some peppermint toads and some fudge flies. These are iconic from the books, so I definitely wanted to display them on my shelf as well. You have, of course, your every flavored bean. We tried a couple of these. I got soap, it was disgusting. I bought this, no, this is empty. I did eat them. Mainly for the tin though. These are Bing Bong Ginger Snaps, but I liked all the bright colors and I thought they would go well with everything else up there. Now from Honey Dukes, we also have, of course, your standard chocolate frog, but we also got the, the collector's tin for the chocolate frog. So I got this one more to display and also, these are really cool because if you're getting started on your card collection, it comes with five cards. Now I have a couple more here and here because I'm using it as a collector's tin. So I had 
Ollivander, which I was pumped about, and then Parcellus, Parcelsus, which was the 2020 card. But the one that actually comes in this tin is Salazar Slytherin, Rowena Ravenclaw, Helga Hufflepuff, Godric Gryffindor, and of course, Albus Dumbledore. So that one costs a little more, but you're guaranteed to get those five cards and you get that cool collectible tin. Now, they do have sugar plums in Diagon Alley, which is kind of like the Honey Dukes of Diagon Alley. The only thing that I really got from there with the actual Sugar Plums logo on it is just a chocolate bar. There are a few other things that I will get from there. Um, I think they also have a taffy, like the Honey Dukes one, but this is all I got for this trip. And then I had to go to Weasley's and get their candy because their candy is iconic. So we have the Fever Fudge. We have Fainting Fancies. And then puking pastels. So those are brightly colored and I was excited to have some Weasley candy. Now one piece of candy or one candy item that I wasn't able to get while we were there was the Skyvy snack boxes. They were all out of stock the whole week. We checked every day. But if I, when I go again, if they have them, I will be getting a Skyvy snack box. I do have some glass items that I wanted to show you that are also related to Honeydukes since we just went over the candy. So we did get these, again, for display purposes. They This is a glass candy jar. So you can actually buy random candies from Honeydukes that aren't like, you know, in its own box. Now we didn't do any of that, but the next time I go, I will probably do that so I can fill this up and put it on my shelf. So this one is a cool little dish from Honeydukes. It is in the shape of the Honeyduke sign and has Honeydukes written on it. Now, of course, you can just kind of set this down like a little plate to hold your candy. But I will probably, I have some stands that you can actually set this on. So that's what I'll probably do. So you can have a good sign of Honeydukes on my Honeyduke shelf. I was actually going to get these just for drinking out of, but I guess I had to get it to display. But they have these really nice size. Honeydukes mugs. Um, they have green on the inside. So this one will be for display and one day I'm going to go and just get one to actually drink out of. So this one was kind of a little bit random. We got this at Wiseacres. I don't have like a, just a really good little cauldron. I do have a little cauldron with the Hogwarts crest on it, but this little guy is just a little cauldron and I thought he was adorable. I'm not sure where I'll put him or what I'll put in him, but he'll be a nice display piece. Now this next item was something that my husband very much wanted. Apparently these used to be kind of expensive, but we picked up for like $19. It's a troll foot. I believe it's a pencil cup, but he won't be a pencil cup here. But how cool is that? We bought this at Borgen and Burks, which is one of my favorite shops. I probably keep saying that, but it is. But he was just super cool. His little troll toes. So that's our troll foot. I did get a couple items from Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes that I thought were pretty cool. First one that I got is this decoy detonator. Now he does come in a pretty cool little box, so I'm not sure if I'll just have him sitting on my shelves or if I'll have the box displayed. But this is, of course, straight out of the books. And I just thought it was really cool to have my own decoy detonator. This next item is kind of big, but I really liked it. So it's the Weasley's Wizarding Weasley's pointing hand. I mean, you can definitely tell that it's a Weasley's item and it's just a very bright standout little guy so you can actually move this little finger to this finger yeah this finger you can move it in different directions that's the only one I think 
but I think it just needs to be pointed because it's telling you to go there. So the next item I got is probably the biggest, actual biggest item that I purchased there. Now I got this specifically at Weasley's Wizarding Weezes because if you purchase a pygmy puff there, you get to have a naming ceremony. Now I will say I was confused. I thought that they would name it for you, but you get to name it yourself. So I did freak out a little bit and I just blinked, but she became Luna. But this is Luna, my big purple pygmy puff. <laughs> I have a little pink one, but I really wanted a big one. And so I already had pink, so I got purple. I love Luna. <laughs> So I know that we talked earlier about my Slytherin cosplay, how I got the tie and the scarf. And one thing that I have been working towards making since I do have my Nimbus 2000 is for Quidditch cosplay. So I did pick up a couple things. Sadly, I didn't get any clothing for it yet, but I have to have a quaffle, especially because I think I would be a keeper. That's what my husband says, I'm a keeper. But, so I got a quaffle. Now, just in case I decide that a beater is more my style, I did get a bludger ball and bat set. So those are just little, they're little like toys, but they're going to be the closest thing that I'm going to get for cosplay. So I thought they were pretty cool. So this next item I picked up because when you're in Universal, you're out there for a long time and you really need a backpack. And the only one that I could find that was actually big enough and I really liked was this little Hedwig. So Hedwig was my buddy the whole week and my backpack and carried all my stuff. I like Hedwig. I will be taking her back on every trip to be my backpack. So this item I didn't plan on buying, but I don't have a lot of Dobby merchandise and I'm not able to find a lot of things with Dobby that I like how they look. Sometimes the eyes are a little too crazy, but this guy was on a cart in Diagon Alley and I really liked how this Dobby looked. I think it's very, very close to, you know, the actual one from the movies. It looks like Dobby to me and I wanted a good Dobby to display. So that's what we have, our little Dobby. And then another favorite purchase from Borgen and Burks is my own shrunken head. Now he's got a little hairband in that I'll take out, but he says fun things too. Let me see if I can get him to say my favorite one. Yeah, take it away, Amy. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> the cool thing about, well, I love him and I want to put him on my car, but I'll have to get another one when we go because he needs to be displayed here. But a really cool thing that they have at Universal if you go, you have to stop by the night bus because he will talk to you and have whole conversations with you. He was very worried about my husband, who is a Hufflepuff, marrying me because I'm a Slytherin. It was awesome. And speaking of the night bus, I don't have anything night bus related. And they did have a couple cool things related to the night bus, but I really just wanted an actual night bus. So that's what I got. This is just kind of a small night bus model. Um, but for right now, he will fit on my shelves and he will be my little night bus display. So I really like this guy. There is another one of these that I will be purchasing the next time that we go. I saw it at Filch's Emporium. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else or if it'll still be there when I go. But there is a Ford Anglia that is from like the same company, same box. It's just a Ford Anglia. So I do want that as well. Now this is something really cool that I had almost forgotten that they sell now. The only place that I saw that you could actually buy this was at the money exchange in Diagon Alley where you can buy your own Gringotts gold bar. How cool is that? You can buy like the chocolate coins, which I do plan on getting some of those when I go back to, but I just wanted my own Gringotts gold bar. It's awesome. Now this is just a souvenir cup that I picked up. When I went to the Universal in Hollywood, I did pick up a souvenir butterbeer cup and a hogshead mug, but in Hollywood, they don't have Diagon Alley. So I didn't get to have any 
Florian Fortescue's ice cream, which is the best ice cream I've ever had. So we did get a souvenir cup from there. I highly suggest you try their strawberry peanut butter ice cream. It's incredible. So this piece is very random, <laughs> but it's a little Slytherin-like paperweight. The reason that I picked this up is these were on sale because they had had these before, but they are getting rid of them. And the only ones that they had left were Slytherin, which I'm a Slytherin. So I went, I went ahead and picked one up because it's something they're not gonna be making anymore. So I thought it was kind of a cool piece to have. And you can't visit the Wizarding World of Harry Potter without your Hogwarts Express ticket. So I did get this because it is just a really nice item that I didn't have. It's got gold foiling on it. And one thing I find really cool about this ticket is this side you can see is Hogwarts to London, but then the other side is London to Hogwarts. So it's like your round trip ticket. And I needed one because how am I gonna to get to Hogwarts if I don't have a ticket? This item is really cool. I'm not gonna use it for its intended purpose, but I got a Howler pop-up card. So this thing you can use as like an actual card to send somebody and you can record your own Howler message, which is awesome. But I don't have a Howler display. So if you look at the back of this, it is very similar to the one from the films. And I'm just gonna open that bad boy up and display it so that I can have a Howler piece. So I did go ahead and open the Howler because I really wanted to show you guys what it's gonna look like and how, how cool it is. So you see just the front of it. Now, this thing you can actually, it came with stickers. So I guess whoever you send it to, you can put the first letter of their first name on there. But look at it opened up. I've got a little howler. I think that's so cool. That guy's definitely going on the shelf. And he does have little kickstands. That way you can actually display it and keep it open. Or one little kickstand, I should say. So yeah. So this is another kind of paper replica that I got. I haven't taken these out to make them, but they do have instructions that I have seen other videos showing how to make them and they seem pretty simple but you can make your Ministry of Magic, your Ministry of Magic memos. And they are the like the little paper airplanes that you see them in the films, but you write about them in the books too, that fly from department to department with their memos. Just a cool little magical piece. I like having something to display from the Ministry of Magic because that's another thing that I feel like they don't have too much of. And another person who doesn't have enough merchandise dedicated to them, and they should, is of course Luna Lovegood. This was probably the cheapest thing that I got there. This thing was only, only $7 for this whole like quibbler cover. And it has Spectra Specs in it. I'm gonna keep this as a paper replica, but this thing's so cool. There really needs to be more Luna stuff. She is top three favorite characters. So being fairly new to the collecting game for Harry Potter, I actually don't have very many pins, if any pins, before this trip. I do plan on getting a pin board. So I did pick up a few pins that I really wanted. I am a Slytherin, so of course I need a Slytherin Prefix pen. But, you know, two years after I'm a Prefect, I'm also going to need a Slytherin Head Girl pen. This pen is showing an item that I will be purchasing at Universal one day, but it is expensive. The Gringotts Tower with the dragon on it. You can buy the replica statue of this for like $500, but the pen itself is super cool and it's Gringotts. I also stopped in when we were at Weasley's and got the pen that actually matches the logo on my shirt as well. This pin was an impulse buy. I didn't plan on getting it before we went, but I saw it in person and it was beautiful and I had to have it. But it's the window to the prefix bathroom. How pretty is she? I saw it and I was like, wow, I have to have that one. 
Now this one is really cool because it looks like just a pin of the chocolate frog box, but it opens up and there's a real little chocolate frog in there. How cool is he? I like him. Now the last two pins are probably my two favorite. Of course, I had to have a Nocturne Alley pin. That is the coolest thing. This was the first pin I purchased. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yep, I'm getting it. But this one, this one's like a two part pin because you get two pins technically. Umbridge's Quill. And then it has a piece of parchment that says, I must not tell lies. That one was really cool. When the guy was bagging this, he was not being gentle and I was terrified he was gonna make my feather look bad. I made sure to find one with a perfect feather. So we've almost come to the end of the video. The last few things that I have to show you are the replica noble collection items that I got from Universal. Now, as far as I know, this item that I'm gonna show you has been discontinued. I haven't been able to find it anywhere online that you could order it. I did hear that the only place that you could purchase it right now was at either Universal Studios or the Warner Brothers Tour in London. So this is a big guy. Comes in an awesome box though. So you see the box says the Wizarding World Universal Studios. I'm going to open this down here because I don't want anything to fall out of it and break. So this is a prop replica of the pictures that they have on the house tables in the Great Hall. And if you look in the films, you can see these. So it's a picture with the golden hog's head. Let me go ahead and take it out. Just kind of show you a little better what it looks like. Now you can actually use these. So this is the bottom of the picture, and this is the top of the picture. So I'm having a really difficult time trying to actually get it on there, mainly because I'm scared to break it. I don't want to break it. So anywho, what you'll end up doing is you set that on top of the picture and push it down, and you have the replica of the picture from the actual films. So he's pretty cool once I figure out how to put his head on without breaking him. So this next piece is, it's a smaller piece, but it is a piece that I have wanted for a very long time. And so it was there, so we decided to pick it up. So this is a crystal ball from the divination class. You can see it's got the elephants like they do in the films. And if I was a Hogwarts student, I think that I would enjoy divination, unlike Hermione. And I just really liked this piece, so I'm very excited to have it. Now, the next two items, when we were at Universal, they seemed to be a rare commodity. This next item, I was going to buy it from Filch's Emporium, but they only had one left and it was the display, and they didn't have a box for it. I was worried about bringing it home without a box, so they did tell me there was one other store that had one. It was also the display, but they did have a box for it. So we went to the Universal Studios store, which is what had it, and they actually had one besides the display. So there's only a couple of these left at Universal. But this is a statue of the Riddle Grave. This one I love this one because it's it's just a small statue, but it's so well made and it looks just like the grave that you see in the fourth film. But you have the statue on the front and it has the wording on there. It says Thomas Riddle, 1880 to 1943. Mary Riddle, 1883 to 1943. And Tom Riddle, 1905 to 1943. So that is, of course, from when they all died. And then it has a riddle on both sides of the grave. So this is going to look amazing whenever I find a place for it. I actually bought so much stuff on this trip that I think I'm going to have to buy a couple more bookshelves because I don't think I have enough room for it all. Okay, so this last item, I don't even know if it's 
necessarily a more common item that everyone will know exactly what it is when I show it. But it is even it was even harder to find than the Riddle Grave. There was only one left in the entire Universal Studios. The person that we spoke to said it had been their display for over 10 years. No one had ever bought it, like asked for it, but there, there were no other ones. We checked in a lot of different stores. They looked in their systems. This was the only one they had. This is also a discontinued item that I was unable to find on like websites. Um, you can maybe find them on eBay, but you can't just order it. So this is the Hogwarts architect. Of course, the architect. He, there's a big statue of him in Hogwarts in the films. But you can see the little Hogwarts up here, or a little piece of Hogwarts up here. And you've got your Gryffindor lion, your snake, your Slytherin snake, your Ravenclaw eagle, and then your Hufflepuff badger, all at his feet. And he's just so cool. Now, I didn't think that I would be able to get him because I had been having such a hard time finding him. So I was so excited when we saw that there was this one left at the studios. I cannot wait to put him on my shelves so that everyone can see him. So that's going to be it for part two of my Universal haul. I had such a great time visiting Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley and getting to purchase all these awesome things. Even though I purchased what I feel like was a lot on my trip, there is still so many items on my wish list that I do plan on picking up whenever I get a little extra cash and take another trip. So what are your guys' favorite items from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter? Was it something that I already brought home on this trip? Or is there a different item that you think is a must-have that I should add to my collection? Please just leave a comment and let me know. As always, thank you for watching. If you would like to see more videos related to Harry Potter and the Wizarding World, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you next time in the common room.